or there's a, a misnomer out there that this strength and conditioning works makes LeBron into LeBron. LeBron is already LeBron. Mm-hmm. Like the elite athlete is already there. Yeah. The work they do in their training just keeps them there and they can play throughout a season or it recovers them or it allows them to be slightly more resilient than they would have been before. So today's reaction video is looking at LeBron James gym workouts. Uh, these look to be like posts on his social media uh, and he's just doing random shit. So we're going to have a look at it. Like with all the other videos, we're just talking shit a lot of the time. So don't get offended because you're favorite sports there is doing something stupid <clears throat> so when we have Friday it's just a load of <laughs> random X like so a lot of times people and we've said this about you know for example when we did um, Harry Aikens or Aikens is just the you know we don't have context for things but some of the stuff Harry was doing you could make an argument for a lot of it was very useful you know but so but this stuff is just like far left here yeah what the is, jigging but, from side to side like, that's like some play on, like, an anti-rotation drill, Pavlov press. But he's moving his hips so much that he's not doing anything. He's just kind of bouncing over and back. So he's... Okay, so he's in touched, touchdowns and split squats, which makes sense. Yeah. And those touchdowns have a very, very bad range of motion. Well, that's okay for, for, for touchdowns like that. Like, you, yeah. you know... I don't know what he's doing on the far left here. Uh, I think it's like a bench press, but standing. Okay, so he's just, he's actually you to be fair to him. Yeah, he's in great shape. Right, so we're seeing a lot of split squats and single leg work, which is actually perfect, which yeah. I'd like to see. But, oh no, what's on the end of this? Oh wait, what's on the far right? So this is another variation on a Pavlov press, but he's shaking them so it's like making it unstable. Uh, I don't know if that's doing anything. That's not doing anything. So usually when you're doing anti-rotation work, you want like a consistent load pulling against you or you having to react against a consistent load. People think making things shaky makes you better at stabilizing them. But that's not how that works. All right. So on the far left there, you can see him doing 40 kilo uh, quarter squats or third squats. Like... There's just no point of doing those. Like, it literally makes no, no sense. Like, he's got no range of motion. It's a really weird position. The weight certainly is going to do absolutely nothing for that athlete. He experiences him with that level of muscle mass. Like, 40 kilos is going to do next to nothing. Yeah. So, we did see some hamstring curls there, which normally falls, which is great. Yeah. So like, what he's doing on the far right, like, dragon flag mm-hmm. with, but, like, very poor range again. Um... To be fair, a lot of this isn't the worst. No, it's not terrible at all. But it's like very unimpressive. Yes. For one of the best athletes in the world. Uh what what's happening on the right is bad. Right, you, you someone's gonna try to give me a good reason for the spots. <laughs> someone's trying to go to, definitely in the comments is gonna try to give us a good reason for this. They're gonna be like, no no, you don't understand basketball training. This is no, no. point. It was just stupid, like Alright, so Tricep push downs. Just fine. normal bodybuilding work, yeah. Yeah. Uh, rows here. Um, yeah. Just general strength training, which is fine. Some, like, things popping up all the time is the stance is always really wide. Yeah. Like, on the squats. Like, proportionally wide. Fits yeah. It's, it's not because he's it's crazy tall. Mm-hmm. He's too wide for how tall he is. Yeah. Uh, and that is, like, that's a... I think that happens with taller athletes is because they move their stance wider because they're taller and then they kind of move wider again because they think it's going to make things better. Like, you need to do what's correct for you and your proportions, not just what feels better. Okay, so... <clears throat> single arm man makers or something? Yeah, single arm man maker row, I bet. Okay, not a bad exercise. Yeah. Great exercise. Great exercise. What's he doing here? Pavlov press again. Great exercise. This is good. Yeah. No shaking. Mm-hmm. I assume he has a fairly substantial load on the cable. Yeah. Like you can actually see it in his midline there, where you can see his midline having to work. That's beneficial. Yeah. It's just a lot of bodybuilding, really, which is like we're perfect. Not, yeah, like we're not seeing a lot of like 
strength training well have we seen strength training yet vaguely we haven't seen any of what he does for strength training but yeah well, which you know I assume he does some of it but at least at least he hasn't done any power endurance training or something stupid oh my god where you're doing like high rep like the uh, combat sports athletes do if you watch the empty Joshua one which people get very defensive about but he's not doing like trying to build his endurance doing like weighted punches or something stupid or a weighted basketball there's a lot of stuff here he's just getting in good shape stands yeah. on the right hand side again you'll see it Okay, so easing snatch grip deadlifts. Um but maybe he's warming into it. No, I'd say this is it. Like the just the stance being too wide, right? Watch his knees now. As he's going down and his knees are caving in, his stance is too wide. Like he's he's inducing valgus rotation in his knees because especially on his right leg there, uh the left leg on or it's on the left hand side of our screen. That's a crazy... That's bad. Like, we don't often say things are bad. To be, so a lot of times when we do these, right, a lot of people's training is stuff is genuinely bad. But most of this is just either fine and like it's doing something useful or it's just not really doing anything. Which is some of the best you can offer for a lot of video lately training is like you're just not hurting someone. Like you're just doing something that's going to make no difference. Which yeah. is... is is the best you can offer for a lot of times. So, like, when you see something that's pretty positive, like, he's just doing some upper body mass, bodybuilding, yeah. staying in good shape, as much muscle tissue as you can have while still being at a weight, I imagine that lets him be aerobically fit. And there's nothing wrong with that, to be fair. Like a phenomenal specimen of a human. He's got a basketball here, isn't he? I think so, yeah. I think he shot some hoops. Those two ball lads are probably paid about... Yeah, 80 grand a year. Yeah. Even though this guy looks like he's an actual coach, so he's probably on way more. Yeah, I'd imagine. Put the ball by there. Yeah. Personally, this is PA. We're just watching basketball training here. <laughs> so obviously this isn't our, our area of expertise. <laughs> is there an S&C? Is there more to this video? Yeah, there's gym training at the end. He's some unit. Yeah. I assume they don't drug test in the NBA, do they? No, no. Or like, not really, though. No, I think it's like, in-house... Double. They play like two games a week. Yeah, it's a long season. They get injured wholesale. The amount of yeah. Achilles tendon ruptures they get, ACL tears. And it's all non-contact ones, which is terrible. Yeah. Which is such a bad thing to have as an athlete. That when no one's putting outside force, you know. So when you when you get... So when, when someone hits you with contact or with force, you know, and you tear an ACL or something, you've you've some kind of excuse from an S&C department saying, you know, there was an outside force, there was a collision impact... It was unavoidable, just very bad leverages. And you're like, okay, that's fair enough. You know, that can happen very regularly in sports. But when you're just dribbling and you're dodging or whatever, and you have, they call them like ankle breakers or whatever, and someone ruptures an Achilles tendon, no one's touching them. That's just a huge sign of neglect from an S&C department. Inability to protect their athletes from, you know, from just general playing. Like, that shouldn't happen. Yeah. I think as well there's some, like, incredibly bad habits in the sport of basketball. Jumping with valgus knee rotation and landing with valgus knee rotation is normal. Jumping with flat ankles, like flat feet, mm -hmm. uh, that seems to be normal. Like any of the basketballers I would know yeah. have spoken about that being like, that just happens wholesale. It's just part of the sport. Like, no, it's not. That's not correct. Just, you're watching an elite athlete do it who's like literally peak genetic potential. It doesn't mean you can do it. A lot of times as well with this, you know, you'll see, like, tendons respond very well. You know, they can take a lot of force if they're trained to it. So tendons adapt very well to forces, just like muscles, you know, there's not a... You can train your tendons, they adapt just along with everything else. So, for example, if you're looking at the, the squats LeBron was doing there, is you see they're so high, they're so wide, there's such a limited range of motion. So it's not even the weight that matters for these it's the fact that he's training his body through a range of motion that would represent his gym work or his uh his feel range of motion on play you know when he's really low with a ball or whatever that's when they get injured because their their tendons aren't able to withstand the forces and that's what strength conditioning is is there for is to allow you to resist the high forces when you go to change direction so change of direction training or change of direction applies a lot of forces through your muscles joints ligaments so 
having a high level of force production and rate of force production through strength training will allow you to resist those and not get injured, you know, if you do them through a, a good range of motion that represents what you're doing. Whereas, you know, 40 kilo, four inch depth squats is going to do nothing for that, you know. And, and like, I don't know if Le- LeBron has a lot of injuries, but lots of other basketball players have. Are they doing Pilates? Mm-hmm. I suppose it, it is what it is. Right, single leg RDLs. Yeah. Perfect. Again with the yeah. more bodybuilding. Yeah. Some but footwork drills. Perfectly normal. He's not gonna be that fast to be fair to him. And you don't really need to be incredibly directionally fast, you know, straight line sprinting is not gonna really happen in, in basketball a whole lot. If you looked at like where basketballers excel in speed work, mm-hmm. they excel in agility. Yeah. Um and their acceleration values are quite good. Yeah. They're yeah. straight like they're strangely talented because they're if you think about like sprinting in a classical sense, you're in an in, uh, inclined over position and driving forward, yeah, they're whereas they're like constantly low. Yeah. Um, so agility wise, they get very good values, but yeah, you're not going to maximize. No. Your sprinting ability. So monster walks, single leg glute bridges, um, some weird core work. Yeah. Single leg ordeals again. See, see, the thing is, I could imagine being in that position of the S&C coaches and you're like, you just don't break them. Yeah. But you'd, you'd, you'd have to take somewhat of a chance and put some kind of effort in. I think people get really... Or there's a, a misnomer out there that this strength and conditioning works makes LeBron into LeBron. LeBron is already LeBron. Mm-hmm. Like, the elite athlete is already there. Yeah. The work they do in their training just keeps them there and they can play throughout a season or it recovers them or it allows them to be slightly more resilient than they would have been before. Most of what you see in terms of like the actual expression of his athleticism is there purely from genetics and purely from him training as a younger athlete. So like a lot of that would be just S&C in kind of my view would be longevity so make sure you don't get injured and rehabbing from injury and then the other one would be just maximizing your potential so it's never really going to make you you know it'll ne- it's never going to make you beyond what you could become but it can help you maximize what you potentially could be you know like it's fit said lebron is always going to be lebron but it's just going to make him 5 10 15 percent better f- for a very long career but it looks at mm. it's just random dynamic stretching stuff A lot of times as well, the athletes just don't know what's good for them either. And I don't mean that, you know, and we've talked about this in the past, you know, where it's like, it's not their job to know what's good for them. It's not their job to think about what their strength and conditioning coaching should be, you know, because they're very expensive athletes. So, like, they just need to, they should be able to trust whoever they're going to. Just more bodybuilding again. Yeah. I love the cycling with the mask on. Quick VO2 test. VO2 max test. Oh, here we go. Right. <laughs> this. This is the stupid shit we're talking about. Like, there's no need for him. Just doing full depth body weight squats would be far more useful than standing on water pads. I think they're air balls. Uh, but this is, like, exactly what we always talk about. You don't train stability yeah. by making someone super unstable when he can't even do a full range of motion squat. Yeah. And it's not because he's too tall or whatever. Like, his leverages no. are in proportion. He's, he doesn't have, you know... Like, it's it's not something with his lower limbs that are vastly out of proportion. And, like, if you... At the bottom of a change of direction, which he was going through, you know, if he was going left and he went to change right, he'd get very, very low, get a full range of motion. His knees would be well in excess of his toes. Hashtag knees over toes guy, whatever. Don't ask us to do a video on him. People keep asking. Yeah, please stop asking. But, like, he'll get really low. But any of the training he's replicating there, you oh, know... Oh, wait, what's happening here? Oh, no, he's just... Been... What's he doing? Just planks? No. Oh, this oh, is good. Back extensions. This is upper back extension work. Great exercise. Didn't you see him doing these? No. You know, a lot of this training is actually not that bad. No. More, Much more of it's good than it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not what I was expecting. I, I thought it was going to be a lot worse because we hadn't looked at any of these videos yet. But just don't expect to get performance results from any of this. Yeah. This isn't why he can dunk a basketball or be the best basketball player in the world or whatever. Like, did... This is literally just maintaining what he, he already is. So we're seeing a lot of rotational work. And, you know, when we did Anthony Joshua's, for example, a lot of people 
where the tact is about doing rotational work saying it doesn't make sense to do actual rotation work you shouldn't you should never do rotational work you should do anti-rotational work like the payoff presses which he did which is great but for you know if you want to train obliques or whatever it is you think you're training or want to train you know the actual rotational work under load is just never a good idea because you don't really train oftentimes you get momentum training with that rather than actual just force production and this momentum you'll see it here like he takes a step and pulls it mm -hmm. like if you wanted to train well you'd already be in the position and you just like pull it into your position or hold it there yeah like he's 98 percent of the force he's producing is by his ass and his leg stepping to the side and then the rope follows the only thing i don't like about his home gym is its carpet yeah, imagine how sweaty it smells. Yeah. But I suppose he can just pay someone a crazy amount of money to clean that. Put under the carpet. Yeah. Yeah, Renegade Man Makers. That was a great exercise. Lovely exercise. Didn't think I'd see that. I'm actually not that mad at a lot of this. Um, this is, You see, the stability training and the rotational stuff is probably the most egregious. Right, is he going to do squats? Yeah, I don't... Wait, what's he doing? Oh, right. Well, I don't know. This is like, why is that pulling him to the side? Yeah, it's pulling him the wrong direction if you wanted to do anything. It's, yeah, this is the opposite of what would be beneficial. Well, I suppose it's a cable machine, so maybe... Like, for the only thing that I feel like is missing, and I don't say this about every athlete, just because, you know, we're weightlifting coaches and SAT coaches, but just some full-depth squats would make me feel very happy. <laughs> I've, I'd, if I was his SNC coach, what would make me feel so safe is if he could just do full-depth squats <laughs> with his body weight for a few reps. That would go a long way just to protecting him in sport you know um, when he's actually playing what's happening here just seen a great picture of his ass I suppose. do you know what this is like is like a 21 year old girl who is an Instagram influencer yeah and she does weird exercises because it puts her ass in front of her camera right Cossack squats I like Cossack squats but they're not going to be full depth of motion I suppose yeah so this is a problem again I don't like I think this is probably why knees over toes guy does so well and why a lot of you guys watching this, if you're a regular viewers, won't really get a lot of benefit from these over toes. I know we're going to topic, but I'll talk about it anyway. Because most of you do train full range of motion, you know. So it's probably not going to solve your issues. Whereas a lot of people who knees over toes guy do interact with are people who never trained range of motion. So you see like there's knees are always behind the toes with these. And suddenly you're going to get a huge amount of, you know, uh, like better blood flow, better range of motion just by training it, doing full depth squats, yeah. knees over toes. You're going to get a huge amount from that when you've limited your range of motion for most of your sporting career so then when you go actually train that full range of motion you get a huge relief you know whereas a lot of you guys watching your weightlifters or powerlifters or you can you know your athletes who do who like our style of training their style of strength training so you're going to be used to that stuff you know whereas like someone like lebron here seems bar the split squats we saw him doing actively seems to be avoiding knees over toe so you know he's touchdowns and he's lateral squats he's cossack squats um this movement here is like very indicative of a probably an injury in that knee or a, a good lack of proprioception. Mm -hmm. Like he's wearing extremely spongy shoes as well, which doesn't help. But like if you can't do this with a foam roller at home, you need to look at your knee stability and ankle stability. Like the amount of movement he's getting there is not good. Most of the shoes not helping him though. Yeah. He's standing on a cloud. On carpet. <laughs> I bet you this will be better. No, I didn't see. Right, I, I, waff ankle. That must be some product. Yeah. Maybe, he's, maybe he's associated with this product. So again, like stability training, isn't putting yourself in an unstable position and trying to be stable. It's having putting yourself in a stable position and then trying to resist. Resist being unstable. Yeah, it's it's a funny dynamic, and you you think, oh, surely it makes sense. Try, it. but you you need to train that pattern the way you want to be stable so he's never in a position here where he's actually in a stable position you know so he's in a position where he's never he's always compromised you know and you just repeat that then you know in your sport or whatever like you're 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 essentially reinforcing instability as opposed to actually reinforcing stability yeah so thanks very much for watching if you have other athletes you would like to see a reaction being done to post in the comments below as always if you want to talk shit post it in the comments below as well yeah, don't get offended. So we never really want to iterate with these. So we've no context for all of this stuff, but that's, you know, that's why we're just talking about in general for basketball. But also, we're not attacking the athletes. We're attacking the coaches often that they are associated. No, we're just attacking the movement or critiquing.
positively or negatively the movement that they're doing when they're doing these things. So again, we're not attacking LeBron on anything he said. We're not attacking any of these coaches. You know, we'd be more than happy to hear why they would say what they're doing. Now, in this one, it was mostly positive, but not all of these ones we do are, are always positive. We try to pick... A, a lot, lot of, of them aren't positive. No, a lot of them aren't positive. So we just want to make sure that it's... um That we're, you know, we're not attacking people. We're just critiquing what's happening and why it probably or probably is useful for basketball training. 